Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the background of one image with another image in GIMP. And I'll show you two different methods to do that. First things first, I need to open up the two images that I'm using. So first I want to open up my background image. That's the image that's going to ultimately be the background of the picture. So to do that, I'll go to file open. I know it's on my desktop, so I'll go to desktop and I'll choose this lovely painting here. Now to open the foreground of this picture, I'll go to File, Open as Layers, and I'll choose this lovely image. Now I know this foreground image is a little bit too big for the background image that I've opened up. So I can go to layer, scale layer, and when I look at the width dimension, I see that the uh, foreground layer's width is 3000 pixels wide. But if I look at the image's width up here in the title bar of the image, I see that the image itself is 2100 pixels wide. And the image is going to be the width and height of the first image that you open. So I know the background layer is 2100 pixels wide. So this layer that I've opened up on top is significantly wider or significantly bigger than the background that it's sitting on. So I kind of want to scale this down and make it a more appropriate size for the background that it'll, it will be sitting on. So I'm just going to choose 2100 for the width here. And when I put my cursor in the height field, the height will automatically update to the correct height. Um, and it does that because these two dimensions are locked together. If you click this button and uh, unlock it before you change any of the values, uh, the height won't update to match the width. So you want to make sure that these two values are locked together. Okay, now I'm going to click scale and GIMP will scale down this top layer here to better match the bottom layer. You can see that there's a little bit of space on the top and the bottom uh, where you can see the background layer now because they weren't both the exact same aspect ratio. So you could move around this layer if you wanted to line it up a little bit differently at this point. And once you're done moving it around, you would want to crop away any of that extra background that you can see. So you just highlight the area that you want to keep and then press enter to crop away the rest. All right, now we can get rid of this white background here to allow our new background to show through. And there's a couple of different methods that you could do. Actually, there's quite a few different methods that you could use to achieve this effect. But I think the method that the method that I would go to most often is by using a layer mask to hide all of the areas that are white. So I'll add a layer mask to this layer by right clicking on it and choosing add layer mask. I'm going to choose a white mask for now and then I'll click add. A white mask isn't going to do anything, but when you paint black on a white mask, for example, if I grab the paintbrush here and I make sure that the mask is selected in the layers dialog, when I paint black on a layer mask, it's as if I'm erasing parts of the layer. But the really cool thing is, is that if I go back and paint white back over where I painted black, it undoes that erasing effect. So it's actually a lot cooler than the eraser because you can't undo erasing like that. So now that you have the idea of how layer masks work, uh, I'm going to create a selection that I can then use the bucket fill tool to fill in black on all of the areas that white appears on this top layer. So in order to select all of the white areas of the top layer, I need to make sure that the layer itself is selected and not the layer mask in the layers dialog. I can make sure that it's selected just by clicking on it and it doesn't hurt to click on it several times just to be sure. 
And then in this case, since I'm selecting just one single color, I can grab the fuzzy select tool and then just click and hold shift and click again and hold shift and click again on any of the white parts that occur in my photo. You could use any kind of selection tool at this point though, any tool that makes sense for your photo. So you could use the rectangle select tool, the ellipse select tool, you could use the free select tool that looks like a lasso, which you use by just sort of clicking points around an object. You could use the paths tool, any tool that makes sense for the thing that you're trying to select. And remember, we're selecting all of the areas that we want to erase or that we want to hide underneath the mask. Now, I'm not going to bother doing all of this because you will get the point. But it's pretty quick just to hold shift and then click again to add to your selection. All right, so now I can make sure that my foreground color is set to black. And to do that, I can click on this tiny little black and white square here to reset my foreground color to black and my background color to white. All right. Now I'll make sure that the layer mask is selected because remember we want to paint black on the layer mask and not the layer itself. So I'll just click on the layer mask. And again, it doesn't hurt to click on it a few times just to make sure that it's really selected. And then I'll grab the bucket fill tool. So I'll grab that. I'll go to my tool options and I'll make sure that fill whole selection is checked here in the bucket fill, fill tool options because if fill similar colors is selected, I'll have to click several times around these areas of the selection to fill everything in and it's just easier to fill the whole selection with black. Now all I have to do is click inside my selection, anywhere inside my selection, and GIMP will fill in all of the areas that are selected with black on the mask. And you can see now on the mask itself, all of these areas are black. And what it's doing is it's as if all of the white pixels on the layer are transparent. It's as if it's erasing them, but they're all really still there. All of those pixels are still there. They're just sort of hidden underneath the mask. So as easy as that was, there's actually an even easier way to approach this particular photo. Because we want to change a very specific color and just one color to transparency, we can use a function called color to alpha to automatically change all of the white pixels that are in this layer to transparent pixels. So I can undo this selection by just going to select none and I can trash this mask. I don't need it anymore. So I'll just right click on the mask and go to delete layer mask. And it's as if it was never there. Now the super easy way to make all of these white pixels transparent is to go to colors, color to alpha and the color to alpha window will pop up. Alpha just means transparency. It doesn't really mean anything more fancy than that. So when you're changing a color to alpha, you're changing all of the pixels of a specific color in your picture into transparent pixels. Uh, it will be as if they were never there at all. It will be as if you are erasing those pixels. And the especially cool thing in this case is that the default setting for the color to alpha window is that it will change white into alpha. So since we want to change these white pixels into alpha anyway, we can just click OK without choosing any additional settings. And all of those white pixels will now be transparent. And you can see the new background behind these uh, bridge framework pieces here. Now, if you wanted to change the color in the color to alpha window, Let's say you didn't want to use uh, white as your setting. You could go to colors, color to alpha, and then just click on this colored bar here. Like I said, it's white initially, but if you click on it, your standard GIMP color picker window will pop up. And from here, you can choose a new color to change into transparency any way you like. You can choose a color from the color picker like this. You can adjust some of its values like this 
or you can enter in an HTML uh, color code in this field here. So if I know I want it to be white, I could hit six Fs and hit enter and it changes it to white again. Or you can even select pixels or select a color directly from your image by using the eyedropper and you just click on your image and the uh, new, the current color will change to the color that you clicked. So I can just click OK. And again, all of those pixels that were white are now transparent. You can see in my layers dialog here that those white pixels really have been erased. There isn't a way to undo that in the same way that you could undo by painting white on the layer mask. You can't really do that here. I mean, I could go to, uh, I could hit control Z on my keyboard and literally undo the whole effect and I can hit control Y to redo the whole effect, but I can't sort of paint back in any of those white pixels in the same way that I could when I was using a layer mask. But that's okay because the whole point here was that I wanted all of those pixels gone. All right, so now that uh, my picture is done, I can save it as a PNG or a JPEG. In this case, I think a JPEG is more appropriate. If you're still working on your picture, you should save as uh, and then choose XCF for your file extension. That way, uh, none of the image quality is lost, your layers are still intact, and you can come back and continue editing this layer. But in GIMP 2.8, if you want to save a file as a PNG or a JPEG or something like that, you have to export. So you'll go to File, Export, and then name your file something else so you don't write over the original file that you opened. And then I'll click Export down here. I'll choose an export quality, so I'm going to choose 100. And click Export. And now, if I open this with GIMP, you'll see I have that picture exported as one layer merged together. There's the whole thing. So I hope that was helpful, and if you have any questions, you can leave a comment, and I'll try to get right back to you.